Hello, my name is Emily and, and I'm the Associate Director of Study Abroad here at SUNY Geneseo. And today I am joined by Professor Castillo Rodriguez to talk about our upcoming winter intercession program for winter intercession 21-22 in Equatorial Guinea. I'll uh, let Professor Castillo Rodriguez take over from here. Okay, thank you so much, Emily, for the introduction. Um, so my name is Susana Castillo. I'm a professor in uh, the Spanish department of what is the languages and literature department. I teach Spanish and it's uh, mainly Spanish linguistics. And um, I'm going to talk today about the uh, new program that uh, we want to launch uh, this uh, next intercession in uh, 2022. And uh, we are ready to go with this program. We have been working really hard on this and I'm, we're very really excited uh, to uh, share this uh, uh, program with you today. So I'm going to share my screen uh, so we can uh, go and uh, so I can start like, uh, okay. Is this okay? Are you able to see my, yeah? Do you yep. see my screen? Perfect. Okay. So um, the name of this course is um, Language Field, in, it's a language field school in Afro-Hispanic Afro uh, societies. And um, as you will see during my presentation, um, this is the, um, the name of this course has a, a a meaning, you know, is uh, so um, I'm going to start presenting what is Equatorial Guinea and then I'm going to uh, go further with the uh, focus of this uh, of this course. So you will probably you were wondering where is Equatorial Guinea, because it's a tiny country in, in West Central Africa and um, really, really small with uh, one million and uh, and 300 um, inhabitants. So it's really tiny compared with other countries in, in, in Africa. And, um, and in, is, it has uh, one main island, which is uh, Bioko Island. And in Bioko, um, you can see uh, the town of the city is Malabo. Malabo is the capital of this country. Um, Equatorial Guinea has also a, a continental port, which is Rio Muni. It's uh, next, is the border with Cameroon and Gabon. But um, our, um, our um, study abroad will be in Malabo, which is the capital of the uh, country. Well, why Malabo? Why Malabo in Equatorial Guinea? Well, Equatorial Guinea was a former colony of Spain. And um, um, for many years since uh, um, 1778, um, uh, Spain took the control of, of all these, uh, these African territories. But um, in 1968, uh, the country, the Republic of Equatorial Guinea gained its independence. Uh, but still after that, um, the former um, colonial language, Spanish, uh, remain as the official language. Um, if we talk about the linguistic um, repertoire, uh, how is the, uh, lingu the language scenario in Equatorial Guinea, you can see that Spanish is the lingua franca. And this is why we are going to Equatorial Guinea, because this course is going to be taught in Spanish and the research is going to be in Spanish. But nevertheless, um, there are many other languages, vernacular languages that um, um, speakers use uh, daily in the common base, uh, like uh, uh, Fang, uh, Indowe, Balenge, Benga, or uh, Fadeambo. Also, um, there is one um, uh, English Creole, which is Pichi, the Pigeon English. And it's, uh, you you can um, you can hear that language uh, frequently uh, at the streets every day. So um, this is uh, is highly diversified uh, country, and um, the fact that that we can go there and um, pretty much every day uh, uh, 
here is uh, people speaking in Spanish and uh, um, switching from one language to another, even cut switching, even um, speaking the own vernacular and not Spanish makes this place uh, a wonderful place to run a language field school. So when I'm talking about a language field school, I'm saying that um, we're going to study languages on site, on the site. So this program is going to, uh, um, is going to be um, um, carried out, developed by um, Professor Lori Bernard and, uh, and, and myself. And uh, um, this program has um, special like uh, um, features. We can call this program as a research experience and immersed learning and, uh, and applied learning. Because um, the main uh, purpose of this course is to expose students to a, 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 a really, in fact, on-site research to be able to apply uh, the, the, the content, the learning that we will be, um, we will be developing or will we be, um, yeah, we will be teaching every day. And for them, it is an immersion learning because they are at the same time they are researching and they are surrounded, surrounded by these um, speakers, and they will be exposed to all these different languages and um, and, and go on and so on. Okay, so um, um, we uh, we have in collaboration with the uh, Spanish Cultural Center in Malabo, uh, they have agreed to. Um, for us to use all the facilities and um, the cultural center is, is, a, is a beautiful building with the different classrooms and they also have like a, a, um, a field outside that we can use yeah, for our regular uh, classes, daily classes. Also um, uh, regarding uh, room and board, um, I have also um, secured um, an agreement with the uh, university, uh, National University in Equatorial Guinea. So um, the, um, for me, it was important to, uh, to do this because I want the students to, uh, to mingle, you know, to be uh, uh, experiencing the same as the, uh, as the um, students uh, college students do in, Equator, in, in Malabo. So um, Equatorial Guineans, young Equatorial Guineans studying at the uh, university, national university in Equatorial Guinea, they live in these dorms, in this residency. So uh, we will be able to share um, um, the, resident, the residency and uh, the residence with them. Um, so, uh, well, um, some um, information regarding this course is uh, um, if you are wondering, you know, what do you need to join us? Uh, uh, the prerequisite is Spanish uh, 213. It's a new course that uh, um, we, are, uh, we will be teaching the next fall. But uh, if, you, um, if you came with uh, an advanced uh, level of Spanish or your Spanish skills are really good, eh, you probably you want to take the placement test in our department or uh, speak with me uh, uh, if, we can, um, if, if we can evaluate your language skills and then we can sign a waiver, you know, and you will be able to, do, uh, to join us. Um, this course is for credits, you know, um, meets the, the linguistic requirement for the uh, Spanish major and also the, uh, the minor and the concentration and can also be, um, be uh, transferred or used as an elective requirement at the 300 level. Also, um, another key information is um, that uh, we have uh, one week of uh, online coursework, and then um, uh, we try to maximize the days on the field. So uh, we will be leaving um, the first day in January, you know, uh, January 2nd, and coming back um, two days before the uh, spring semester will start. 
um, I think it was uh, for us it was very important to maximize the days, you know, in Equatorial Guinea. And uh, in order to do that, we needed to add one um, online coursework, which will prepare the students um, to have a, a, a background about the history, about uh, the country, and to be ready uh, to conduct their own research. Um, so the course expectations, you know, if I can summarize some of them, um, you, I already talked about the, uh, the online pre-departure um, and also uh, during the uh, language field school, um, we have daily um, academic instruction. Um, so it's not just myself, but also we will count with uh, um, some speakers speakers, uh, local speakers, that um, they will provide you with more information about um, different languages, you know, the vernacular languages, and also about uh, the Spanish um, uh, Equatorial Guinean Academy of, uh, of Spanish. Uh, so it's just not like you are not going to retire, you know, because Professor Castillo is just delivering all lectures, but we will have more people um, that you can uh, meet and greet. Uh, also, um, during the, uh, this, uh, uh, this time in Equatorial Guinea, in Malabo, students will have to complete readings, you know, take field, uh, field notes and um, design the project, collect data, um, which is, I, I will say, easy because you are there, you know, you are surrounded there. So you only have to observe and record and then analyze uh, your data. And um, so of course, you know, the expectation for this course is to work outside of the uh, academic instruction. Um, so as students, we have uh, academic instruction during the, the, in the morning, and then uh, in the afternoon, we, we have some activities. But, um, so, but I have to say like in Equatorial Guinea, um, the, the daylight is, until 6 p.m. So um, I don't recommend uh, students to be out after 6 p.m. because it's, it's, it's pitch not, uh, dark. And um, so we'll be um, very careful, you know, to, um, to maintain uh, the daily uh, schedules with the students. So they will have time after 6 p.m. Uh, to do the coursework and to study and to um, and also to enjoy, you know, and to enjoy uh, the the city if this is something they want to do. Well, uh, some of the questions, you know, some of the research questions or some of the um, themes that we are going to uh, to tackle are um, things uh, related to. Um, language attitudes, things related to um, linguistic landscape, or uh, questions about um, the uh, prestige of the Spanish language, or uh, questions about uh, uh, the um, vitalization or the maintenance of vernacular languages. So those are some, uh, these are some examples um, for students, you know, to, uh, to see, um, what are we going to do or focus on during this course? Um, this is a, a, a course that you can, um, is related to the Spanish linguistics, you know, um, also of course, we're going to focus on the culture, uh, the history, we're going to talk about um, uh, the, the uh, relations with other countries. Uh, and of course, you know, um, the, the uh, field of studies is, is, is mainly, you know, African studies uh, or Afro-Hispanic uh, studies. Um, so if I can provide you with some information about, you know, this is very detailed, but uh, if you were wondering about um, how are we going to grade your, uh, your coursework, uh, well, your coursework will be graded um, based on this, on this, um, on these items: uh, the online coursework, attendance, participation, uh, the, the the annotated bibliography, uh, your your project, you know, uh, a final report and presentation, and a, and a self-reflective essay. 
So uh, it's totally doable. It's something like a, a, it's a research experience. It's for the students to um, to be able to do their own research and to learn how to do it. Um, so one example of this, you know, how are we going to um, to work um, in on the daily basis? Is uh, for example, uh, one day we have a free day in the morning, but then. Um, in the afternoon, we will go to the beach, you know, to Arena Blanca, or uh, the second day uh, we have like a academic instruction uh, for uh, for two uh, for two hours. But then you will have a roundtable with the students at the uh, National University of Equatorial Guinea, and then um, and then you have time, so you have some homework, you know, uh, to present uh, the day after or things like that. For example, you have a, 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 an assignment that if we are taking a look at the linguistic landscape, of course, you know, one of the assignment will be like uh, to be able to uh, to take pictures of the um, of those uh, billboards um, that I'm going to show you in a minute um, regarding languages. Um, so, for example, this is, you know, this is uh, Arena Blanca, so it will be a relaxing, you know, field trip. It's not. Uh, uh, it's not. Um, bay, it's not um, it mainly the purpose is not just academic instruction, but also you know uh, we're going to go to the um, Academia Ecuatoriana de la Lengua Española, um, which is in downtown in Malabo, and then um, with uh, a, with uh, one of the members, you know, he will be talking about. Um, the, the, the function of the, um, what is this academic for, you know, uh, and um, the um, members, the history, uh, things like that. So, so another uh, example is to do see this uh, um, research on linguistic landscape. And um, in, in Malabo, um, in other parts of the country too, uh, you can find some billboards with uh, uh, with uh, something what we call uh, prescriptivism, uh, which is this like a uh, um, billboard with um, a messages saying like uh, um, this is this is incorrect and you should say this in Spanish, you know. So it's something like we are going to um, we are going to analyze. Yeah? Um, and uh, another uh, another uh, example of the things like uh, we're going to do is just to meet with um, with this uh, two um, in, uh, organizations or associations. One is Loco, Locos por Cultura, and um, they have this uh, comic, graphic comic about um, the uh, the life in Equatorial Guinea, and they also. Uh, use the language, you know, which they call Guineo, you know, eh? uh, to speak Guineo. Eh? It's not just speak Spanish, but they speak a, a variety of Spanish, which is uh, Guinean, uh, Equatorial Guinean Spanish. And um, we will also meet with the um, director of uh, Bocamanja and also AMEA eh, to know uh, what are they do well, what they do, you know, with the all these plays, and to see if they play uh, or if they uh, their performance uh, entails any type of um, languages or or cut switching or cross uh, languages, so they will be able to um, to speak and to explain to us, you know, the work that they do with languages and also. Um, uh, um, promoting the culture and promoting um, and promoting um, going to the theaters, you know, for the um, young population in Equatorial Guinea. Another example I can provide you today is uh, something like I'm really interested on is just the Bikwali. Um, this is something like I need to I need to go deeper on this research. But something I have uh, observed in Equatorial Guinea is that they use or they have been creating a new language in, on, on, in the city, and uh, this this uh, language is is um, is a way of speaking that truncates words. Like, uh, for example, you know they they 
they move their words from one place to another, or they add uh, a different ending to that word. Eh? So um, they use this, this language in order to hide from the policeman, you know, in order to do illegal activities. So it's, it's really, really interesting, you know, this be quality, but it's, it's also a little difficult to observe and to record, you know, if you are doing research. So this is why, you know, it's not, it's not, um, well, it, it, it's, it's going to be very interesting, you know, if we are, if we want to um, research on this, on this, on this thing. And uh, uh, finally, you know, another example I can provide you, uh, those are examples for your research, you know, uh, uh, it can be uh, uh, language attitudes. So um, how uh, Equatoguineans, you know, feel about uh, having three official languages, Spanish, Portuguese, and French as official languages, and not having any of, of the vernacular languages as official languages. How do they feel about that? How do they feel about the Spanish, the colonial language being dominant, a dominant language in education, in the government? How do they, you know, um, do they feel like uh, the, the Spanish language belong to them? Is part of their identity or not? So, these questions are very, very interesting um, in, in, in uh, linguistic research. So um, this is another example for you to focus, you know, for your future uh, projects. And um, I think that's it, you know. Uh, well, I have a lot of experience in Equatorial Guinea. I have been there. I went for the first time many years ago, many, many years ago, and then, um, I did my uh, my um, thesis, my dissertation on the Spanish and the Spanish on in Equatorial Guinea, and since uh, 2011, I have been uh, I have been going pretty much every every or every other summer. So um, my network of colleagues, friends, and um, and. Um, yeah, and uh, people in different domains, you know, politicians also too, and uh, uh, is 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 vast, is 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 really big. So I feel uh, very comfortable in in Malabo, and it's a safe place. It's a um, it's a place that uh, has the uh, beaches, has a, a wonderful, wonderful. Um, and surrounding the, the the ocean for you to to run you know every day uh, and it has a, a magnificent um, a landscape as you can see and uh, I think this is going to be an enjoyable um, experience for you all. So. Now there's an overnight trip right as part of the, the program they'll be going to one other area do you want to talk a little bit about that? Exactly, yeah. So um, hopefully, you know, there is one town in the south of the island, which is Moca, and Moca and Ureca. Ureca has a beautiful um, beaches, and um, they also have a program, uh, one university, Drexel University from the United States, they have a program, which is the uh, biodiver biodiversity program, it's uh, um, to protect, um, to put to protect uh, turtles and to protect um, monkeys on the on this area, so uh, hopefully we will be able to meet uh, people responsible in this bioco um, diversity uh, biodiversity program over there. So in order to get there, um, you can go. Um, you can do a round trip in one day. But um, but I don't recommend that uh, because we want to uh, stop in Mocha. We want to enjoy, you know, the trip, and then um, spend the night uh, uh, in that town. So it's going to be a weekend, a weekend field trip. Yes, that sounds lovely. Um, I'm going to fill in a little bit about the costs and the application. So I'll. Um, have you stop sharing? I can share. Okay. 
our program page. Um, so here is the program page. Um, you can get to our program page by going to our website and clicking search programs and searching for Equatorial Guinea. Um, and a lot of the information that was covered can be found here. Um, the cost information is here. And for the cost sheet, um, we have two columns here. One is New York State residents. One is for our um, out of state and international folks. And all of our programs have a $20 application charge that you pay when you apply. Um, the application is fairly straightforward. The, the main thing that might take a little prep is there is a little personal statement that you have to write. Um, and other than that, you don't need recommendations or anything. Um, if you're a uh, non-Geneseo student, we would need to see um, like a transcript. Um, but all of it, it has um, a study abroad program deposit slash um, also it's a, the admin charge for the study abroad office. That's $250 and that's uh, would be due after you are accepted for this program. Um, and then the other uh, the other costs that you would you could expect to pay SUNY Geneseo um, includes your standard tuition for the four credits the college fee, and then there is the program differential. Um, so that is your accommodations, your room, your meals, your laundry. In-country transportation, the deposit for group, the group flight. So we'll arrange for a flight for you guys all to fly together from um, a major uh, airport. Usually it's um, an air, uh, like JFK or New, uh, Newark Airport. Um, usually it's a New York City airport. Um, several group meals, um, all scheduled program excursions and site visits, including that overnight trip to MOCA. Uh, the study abroad admin expenses, the faculty staff expenses, the international health insurance, which is required. Um, so that all together, that differential is that 1,840 for New York State residents um, or the $188 for non-New York State residents. And all together, both New York State and out-of-state students pay the same because it costs the same to run this program um, for, for both populations of students. So it's that 3,296 AD. Um, and then, the other estimated expenses to plan for includes the uh, group flight. So, right, you pay the deposit for us to hold the flight, the group flight, but then you'll pay whatever the fare is um, that directly to our travel agent. So that's that fourteen hundred or thereabouts. Um, domestic travel, if you have to get to the airport in New York City, um, it will include that. Um, I believe there might be some students who might be joining this program from an international destination. And in that case, we'll figure out the airfare step separately for that. Um, passport, if you don't already have one. Um, Pre-departure expenses, including um, required vaccinations for this program. Um, so we'll help arrange you know, what you need to do as far as required vaccinations to go to Equatorial Guinea. Um, and we'll assist you. I believe it's the yellow fever shot that's required, correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. So we'll, we'll help point you in the right direction of where to go to get that vaccination. Um, and it's also very likely um, that SUNY will be requiring the COVID-19 vaccine for uh, study abroad. So um, that's not, nothing's official yet, but uh, we are pretty sure that it's gonna go in that direction. And uh, in addition, who knows by then, Equatorial Guinea may be also requiring that. Um, and then the personal expenses, which we estimate at about $100 per week. Um, so I wanted to share that. Um, it kind of breaks down the cost a little further and when you can expect to pay things. Um, the application deadline is October 15th. The application is currently open, so you can go ahead and get your application started now. 
Um, and uh, you can also do it um, at very little risk. So if Geneseo, for some reason, if things aren't looking good when we have to make a decision about winter intercession programs, we will, we will refund the application charge that you would pay if we cancel. Um, but um, we probably won't review applications until closer to the deadline. And then it'll be a rolling application process. Um, and then I just also want to point out the a uh, couple other things. Um, we have a COVID-19 FAQ page, um, which talks about how we assess the risk of a location, how we make a decision, when we did make a decision, and what would happen you know, if you go abroad um, and, and there's an outbreak or, or anything of that nature. Um, but fortunately, Equatorial Guinea seems to be doing very well with handling the handling of the pandemic. So that's really encouraging. Um, as well as there's some scholarship information here. Um, and we do have a scholarship specific for winter intercession. It's a thousand dollar scholarship. And um, you can apply after you submit your study abroad application. Um, and the deadline for the Winter Intercession Scholarship is November 15th. Um, so I would encourage you to look at that as well. Um, we have some other scholarships. I'm not sure um, if any of the other scholarships are, if this program's long enough for like the Gilman Scholarship, but it's something that we could look at together. Um, if you're a Pell eligible student, you can apply for the Gilman Scholarship. Um, the program, I believe, needs to be at least 21 days, but it might include the virtual piece now. So if you have any concerns about finances, um, just come speak with us. Um, there is no financial aid for the winter intercession, um, but um, often what students will do is if they turn down any aid for the fall, they'll, um, you can still accept any aid up till the end of the semester. And um, you could apply any of that aid that you would have received in the fall towards your winter intercession. So that's one way students have gone about doing that. But this is a very affordable program in terms of our winter intercession programs. Um, so, um, you know, the, the, the program, the, the travel and the on the ground expenses aren't drastically more than the tuition. So, um, am I missing anything, Susanna? Yeah, uh, well, I'm, I'm not sure if you want to um, go deeper with the uh, room and board that- um, Sure, sure. Yeah. You want, um, I think, would you like to describe a little bit more about that? Yourself, or I think you might know a little more than I do. Yeah, it's exactly. I mean, just to, you know, uh, for the expectations that the students, you know, but I think it's, it's important for the students to know where are they going to <laughs> to sleep, you know, and, uh, and, uh, and meals and things like that. Um, so, of course, this program is, is very affordable, but um, it's also because um, we will be living in, in, uh, in rooms that they are like just the uh, bed and um, pretty much nothing else. So I want to, you know, uh, to put this up front uh, for the students, just if they have any other expectations, uh, the room is just, um, the, uh, the residence is really clean and um, uh, they have laundry, they do the laundry for you. And, um, but the rooms are, um, are just, you know, a room with two beds and a closet uh, for your personal belongings and uh, nothing else. So, because um, it's going to be summer and really hot uh, during the winter uh, intercession here, uh, but it's summer there. Um, of course, we are going to be outside as much as we can. And, um, and then it's important uh, to know that. Um, the uh, bathrooms are uh, shared, so the room has not private bathroom, but um, but um, I think it's something like uh, if you having a student, you know, uh, college students, you probably have experienced that too. Um, um, so that is something uh, to know. 
Um, of course, they provide us with uh, um, uh, breakfast and, and lunch and, and also um, dinner, but um, the, the food is just typical African food. Uh, so this is why we uh, really want to add like $300 per week for you to be able to, uh, to buy uh, water and um, to buy water every day or by week. But also, you know, if you are not happy with the meals provided, you know, because it's, it's not everyone's taste, you know, you probably have a different taste, uh, um, you can uh, buy your own meals. I will say, like, I, I love, you know, I really, really enjoy um, the food in Equatorial Guinea. Uh, it's based on uh, fresh veggies, you know, uh, um, and also uh, with the uh, um, uh, roots like uh, malanga or yuca, uh, but um, the, the cooking in Equatorial Guinea is great and I really, really, I really like it. Um, but I, it's, it's for you to know that too. Um, so as I said, you know, it's going to be hard uh, during that time. So we expect that the students will be um, will prepare, you know, uh, for that um, for that weather too. And I assume there's no air conditioning, correct? No, uh, no. To my knowledge, when I visited last year, uh, I mean, no, last year, the, the year before, because last year we couldn't travel. But uh, the year before, um, not. But I was, I mean, I was really pleased to see how well maintained is is the the rest of the dorms, you know. And um, they don't have um, air conditioning on each room. So you can, you know, you can buy over there because I mean, it's, it's a well-developed um, kind of European city. So you can find stores with everything. I mean, anything that you can, you know, is crossing your mind right now, you can find it there. Uh, so you can buy if you don't feel like it comfortable uh, to buy one uh, fan for you to spend the night. But um, no, yeah. Sounds good, yeah. Um, well, if you have any questions, I know that Dr. Castilla Rodriguez's email is here. Um, so you can always reach out to her um, as well as you can email studyabroad at geneseo.edu. And we would be happy to uh, you know, answer any questions if you have any concerns about dietary concerns or um, anything that, that might cross your mind. We're, we're here to answer any questions. Mm -hmm. Anything else, Dr. Castillo? Um, I don't think so. Uh, what do you think? You have anything that we have? No. We miss it? No? Um, yeah, just feel free to reach out and uh, we'll be happy to help you. We hope that you join us on this program. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Well, um, 